the running stride, hockey stride, or any other type of locomotor activity requires you to go from flexion to extension to apply force onto the ground for movement. Hey guys, thanks for showing up. This video is in response to a conversation I had with a guy the other day who was talking about uh, the people that he trains with do the wall sit and they can do it for three or four minutes and it's very, very impressive. I had one caveat to that to say that there was real, there was no real practical application to doing a four minute isometric contraction on the wall. What I mean is, let's explain it. The wall sit requires you to sit at a 90 degree angle with your back flush up against a wall. Now, this does require some muscular endurance from your legs, but there really is no practical application for doing this in some sort of a sport, and it doesn't directly relate to the running stride or other locomotor activities. Also, your back is supported by the back of the wall, so you're not pressing your whole weight, and your core has that wall to relax on. You're not doing this free form. Once you get past a minute and a half or two minutes, it's time to make this move more unstable or make it harder to do a direct application towards sport or towards general fitness. The next evolution of that move would be the freeform chair sit. In this position, you still weigh the same amount that you weigh normally. There is no resting on a wall and your entire core and your legs have to stabilize your entire body weight. It may just look like a small thing, but raising your arms overhead make this move even more difficult because now your core has to stabilize your arm weight above your head. This is a real difficult move. But everything's working freeform. And this starts burning. So once you work on the muscular endurance for that move, you can start getting into some moving exercises, which is why yoga is so important. We're going to talk about that right now. So we're going to take that chair pose position and we're going to expand upon it by doing some yoga asanas or yoga techniques. So the traditional yoga starts in the mountain pose. We're just going to start on all fours. Now what you can do is you can come up into downward dog. So your butt's high up in the air, and you can swing one foot high. This is working your butt and a single leg balance. Then you're going to swing that foot forward, and you're going to try to position this toe underneath your nose. Some people have limited flexibility that only allows them to get it here. You're going to want to try a nice full range of motion so this leg is at a 90 degree angle. And now, you're going to come up into crescent pose. Now crescent pose is just like the chair squat position, but it's free form. We're standing up nice and tall. Our back leg is strong, driving into the ground. This front leg's at a 90 degree angle. You start getting weaker, you can come up out of it, but the real focus is to get 90 degrees, and we're here, and we're just hanging out. The crescent pose works your body in so many ways. First, your back isn't resting up against a wall like it would on the wall sit. Your body is freeform, and so you have to stabilize your entire load without any additional aids. Second, each leg is holding an isometric contraction, but at opposite ends of the range of motion. Your front leg is in flexion, your rear leg is driving towards extension. The running stride, hockey stride, or any other type of locomotor activity requires you to go from flexion to extension to apply force onto the ground for movement. Holding this isometric contraction will work the local muscular endurance but at either ends of the spectrum. By alternating left leg forward then right leg forward, each leg will get its own work through the range of